so thanks everybody for coming to the mini workshop and obviously for our presenters who are going to present later. Um, so basically what we're looking at today is GNSS and what that basically means is Global Navigation Satellite Systems. Um, so in the case of Galileo or others you can see it's basically a system of satellites that are going to orbit the Earth. A lot of people will know this more commonly as the GPS, which is the, uh, the US system in place. There's also a Russian system, GLONASS, um, the European system is beginning to get up and running, Galileo, and there's also a, a system put up there by China, they do. So it normally consists of, I don't know, 24 to 32 satellites that are uh, orbiting the Earth. Um, the system is comprised of three parts. You have your satellites in space, the grain segment control, and then actually the users. So how it basically works is you have the satellites in space and um, normally have atomic clocks on board. They signal down to the grain stations, uh, which are controlled by the relative space agencies. Um, what basically the time of the signals, the, the running clock time on board. Uh, from this, the grain stations can figure out where the, where the satellites are. They send this information back to the satellite um, to let them know where they are, and then they can send that information to the GPS user or the GNS the sat nav user, um, who can use it to figure out where they are. Okay, so the current system, though, uh, requires a few corrections when you're obviously mm -hmm. modeling this. Uh, mainly, the first main correction is obviously a Doppler shift. Anyone who's done physics will know that if you have one source moving to another, that the, the frequency of the wave that you emit will change according to whether you're moving towards them or away from them. So if you're moving towards the, the user, it's going to be blue shifted, so frequency is going to get shorter and uh, well, higher, and the, if you move away, it's, you're going to get red shifted. Um, so when we're analyzing all these signals, this obviously has to be taken into consideration. Uh, obviously, then there's the Sagnac effect, the fact that the Earth is rotating, so you've got to take in the relative movement that is happening between, uh, between the satellites, the user, and the, the grain stations. Uh, so this can be basically seen as a difference between the proper time of slowly moving clock and fixed clock. But then what else, what threw everybody else off when they first uh, came up with the SatNav idea, I think originally it was the U.S., uh, army project and uh, when they first actually started trying to figure out how, to, how the system would work and put it, they actually uh, it didn't work at the beginning, they kept they were slightly off and they couldn't figure out why because they had their Doppler shift and their Sagnac effect and they someone said you know maybe there's something, you know maybe you have to take in general relativity so they came to the theoretical physicists of the world who were thrilled that there was now an application of general relativity and because what happens is uh, there's a gravitational frequency shift. So if you have a gravitational potential, which is basically uh, a gravitational field that is, you know, so the Earth has one, the Sun has one, basically if you have a very large mass, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to set up a gravitational field. And you want to send light rays or any kind of electromagnetic radiation, uh, the frequency, like the Doppler shift, it will be shifted according to the, the description of the field. So normally if you're going into the field towards the source, you're going to be blue shifted and away from the source, you're going to be red shifted. So again, this has to be taken into consideration and it turned out to be the kind of missing piece of the puzzle that they couldn't figure out at the beginning. Okay, so what we're talking about though today is the RPS. So this is a relativistic positioning system. Um, and what we mean by that, how it works is, how it differs is we actually we, we write all the equations in full general relativity. So when they did the, the normal GPS or GNSs when they work, they actually assume a flat space time and they add on these corrections, that the gravitational frequency shift that I described. And they add on these corrections just uh, as uh, little perturbations to the flat space. What we were proposing, uh, and some work had been done before, uh, become, came on board was that actually you should do these equations in full general relativity. What that entails then is you need null coordinates. So basically instead of using your x, y, z, t coordinates, you're going to use time coordinates. And um, so if I took a 2D example, which I do here, and um, these are world lines representing satellite 1 and satellite 2, 
All that basically means is you can see that satellite one is going to go from, say, in one dimensional space, it's just going to go from here to here in this amount of time, say. And satellite two is going to go a little bit further in the same amount of time, so he's just going faster. Um, if we have another satellite anywhere in space time here, if these guys are emitting light signals that, that travel at 45 degrees on this diagram, um, you can use these two coordinates. So this guy goes, hey, uh, I sent the signal at tau 1, and this guy goes, well, I sent my signal at tau 2. The person here takes in these two signals, and from that he can actually figure out uh, his position. Okay, so what does that mean when you're actually going to put this in reality? It means that you need your satellites to be able to communicate to each other, because they need to send satellites. And like I said, the current system at the moment, actually, the satellites don't talk to each other. They talk to the ground, the ground talks back, and then they talk to the user. So what we're suggesting is that you kind of cut out maybe that ground segment, or at least part of it. Okay, so the advantages of such a system are, well, one, it's covariant. Um, so you have coordinate transformation, uh, coordinate in the independence. Also, the satellites themselves, as the project went on, we can figure out that actually the satellites can be used to constitute their own reference frame. So what this means is that they actually bring in almost a kind of autonomous behaviour. They can set up their reference frame and from that they can tell where they are. So you don't need to be keep talking to the, the ground. So these ground stations now are no longer required. Um, also there's no need for relativistic corrections. So when you're thinking about going into that gravitational potential, that's already involved in the equations that you start off with. So you don't have to add on these little bitsy uh, corrections every time. Also remember, like, the current system might go, okay, we only want to have order, you know, up to a certain uh, accuracy. When the more accurate you want it, the more relativistic corrections you have to take into consideration. So I just described the gravitational redshift. There's also, if you go more, you have the Shapiro time delay. The gravitational redshift, we're talking more about what Earth's gravity affecting it. But if, again, if you want a millimeter precision, you're going to have to start taking in the effects from Jupiter, the moon, the tides. There's all these other things that come on board. And again, this can be much easier done if your whole system is written in full relativity. OK, so as I said, they do set up their own reference frame. Um, but then if they're talking to a person on Earth, they can tell that person on Earth where they are in their reference frame. But obviously, the person on Earth doesn't want to know where they are <laughs> in the satellite's reference frame. They just want to know where they are on Earth. So you can link the systems. But for that, then you just need one ground, one ground station. So if you have the one ground station now, which again, it's still a lot easier system than we have in place today. Okay, and also what you can do as the project grew, we've, we discovered that uh, you can also map out the gravitational field. So the satellites, again, as they set up their own system, they can figure out where they are, then they can actually um, track their own movement. And by tracking their own movement, they can actually map out the gravitational field which they're traveling in. And uh, th this can go, as I said, the gravitational field, this can be made more and more accurate. You can do it just for the Earth, and then if you go into higher accuracy, you can take, actually even use it to measure the perturbations coming from Jupiter or the Moon. So that's basically why we think the Orpheus system is great.